President. Theodore Roosevelt, who is blood related to both President Martin Van Buren and to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, is on record, someday we will realize that the prime duty, the inescapable duty of the good citizens of the right type is to leave his or her blood behind him in the world, and that we have no business to permit the perpetuation of citizens of the wrong type. The problem cannot be met unless we give full consideration to the immense influence of heredity. I wish very much that the wrong people could be prevented entirely from breeding. And when the evil nature of these people is sufficiently flagrant, this should be done. The emphasis should be laid on getting desirable people to breed. Many of the people within the Illuminati bloodlines have made statements like this, and have done all they could to leave many secret offspring behind, because these elite bloodlines have felt they were the chosen to lead humanity. Your ancient aristocratic families such as the Cabots, Lodges and Delanos have been in favor of placing the blame on society's problems on the bad blood of the common man. They forget all the evils that have been perpetrated on these common people by the blue-blooded aristocratic families that think they are so superior. For instance, Illuminati Kingpin Harriman's wife purchased land at Cold Springs, New York to promote a eugenics program. She said that being raised around good race horses helped her appreciate good breeding in man. Eugenics is the philosophy that some humans are genetically superior to others, and that inferior genetic races slash individuals should be destroyed. The first eugenics program started in the United States was by John Humphrey Noyes, the cult leader of communist Oneida communities. John Humphrey Noyes' father was a Vermont congressman, and his mother was a relative of Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th U.S. president. His family was from the burned-out district, from Putney, Vermont. In 1833, Yale granted him a license to preach. Noyes began creating his communist communities around 1836, and he dictated all their major decisions, including their group sex and eugenics policies. In 1869, John H. Noyes selected 53 women and 38 men to be the only ones in his communities allowed to produce children. The goal was to perfect the genetics of the community by only allowing well-bred children. This is believed to be the first eugenics program. All members of the community were encouraged to have sex with everyone else and not to form emotional attachments around it. However, they were not to have procreative sex. The Oneida group can clearly be tied in with European occult groups that tie in with the Illuminati. The Oneida group used central committees and social control through mutual criticism to keep their members in line. Their social control methods were extremely effective. Years later, Chinese communism began using these innovations of noise. Charles Guiteau, who assassinated President Garfield, was a member of Noyes Oneida community. He became a member because his father, a disciple of Noyes, took him there as a boy. Charles stated that at the Noyes community, he came under the influence of Noyes and I was unable to get away from that influence. A man was just as isolated from the world as if he were confined in state's prison or lunatic asylum. I suffered greatly in mind and body and spirits during incarceration in that community. He claimed he had never gotten free of the control that began when he entered the Oneida community. In 1880, he began hanging around the Republican Party's NYHQ. This was a very strange thing, because Charles Guiteau had never had any interest in politics his entire life. He bought a pistol from a gentleman, and then shot President Garfield. Knowing that Illuminati mind control was already taking place at this time, certainly makes this assassination an area for further study. John Noyes had his groups conducting seances and carrying out initiation rites. He personally sexually initiated the girl children of his communities at these rites. In June, 1879, when the authorities came to arrest him for mass rape of little girls, he fled to British Canada, where the British government gave him asylum. After Noyes skipped the country, the community was incorporated as a joint stock corporation called Oneida Limited, which later burned a large amount of the personal records and the diaries of the members to keep their sexual activities forever secret. It's interesting to note, that long before 1879, in June, 1847, Noyes had treated a woman Harriet Hall for tuberculosis and dropsy by holding a seance ritual and sexually sealing the spiritual cure with intercourse with the woman. After the woman's husband reported this, a grand jury indicted Noyes. He skipped bail and an almost sure conviction by fleeing to New York. People have wondered how he managed to practice his odd sexual behaviors for years and never get into trouble with authorities.